Hi, Peter King with the MMQB here, and welcome to One on One with Peter King, presented by the new Windows. And I'm here with my partner in crime at NBC during the fall, Tony Dungy. Uh, Tony and his wife, Lauren, have written a new book. Here it is. Look. It's called Uncommon, and, or Uncommon, Uncommon Marriage, marriage. Pro rather. And it's about how to build a strong marriage in days when uh, a lot of marriages are not that strong. Tony, I'll start with that, and then we'll get to some football. My favorite story in this book that America does not know <laughs> is that you were once arrested and spent some time in jail. The angelic Tony Dungy, you've got a halo over your head right now, and you were arrested, and you got it, you got to tell me the well, story. Well, I wasn't so angelic that night. I was working in Kansas City. I'm a young assistant coach for Marty Schottenheimer. We're working long hours, driving home about 2.30 in the morning. And a policeman, I guess he'd followed me almost from the stadium, get off the expressway, I'm turning into my neighborhood, and the lights go on, and he says, you know, you were speeding back there on I-435. I followed you for 10 miles. And I started to think, well, if I was speeding back on the highway, you know, why didn't you stop me then? But I'm just turning into my neighborhood. He asked for my ID. You can see, you know, I'm going to my house. And he asked me, uh, what do you do? And I took that the wrong way. You know, I yeah. took that as this guy is wondering how I can be in this neighborhood as a, as a black man. And so I, I just clammed up and they gave me a ticket. I, said, and I told my wife, I said, I'm not paying this. I'm going to go to court. I didn't do anything wrong. Went to court, went through the whole thing. The judge said, well, I'm going to find you guilty, but uh, only find you $5. And I still, that wasn't good enough for me. I said, the principle of this thing, I didn't do anything wrong. I'm not paying. I ended up spending about six hours in jail <laughs> and uh, finally ended up paying about $600, the whole ticket, court costs and everything else. But uh, it gave me a chance to talk to my kids about standing up for your, your rights and principles, but doing it the right way. I should have handled it a little differently, but I was going to stand up for my principles. Tony, let's get to the NFL for a couple. You recently interviewed Jonathan Martin, who's at the center of the Richie Incognito, Jonathan Martin storm. When you walked away from there, I was very curious about one thing. Did you think, after you talked to him, that the one thing he probably should have done before he walked away is to go talk to one of his coaches, either to Joe Philbin or his position coach? That was absolutely the stunning thing to me, Peter. We went through a lot of things that happened, what he perceived going on, and I said, did you ever talk to your head coach? And he said, no, I didn't. Even when he left the team, he told Coach Philbin, I'm dealing with some personal things. He never told him what was going on. And I said, Jonathan, if I'm your head coach and there's something that's a problem in our locker room that's causing us not to play as well as, as we can play or causing you a problem, I would expect you to come to me. And I just did not understand that. But he said, you know what, I've been told there's certain things that stay in the locker room. You don't talk to your bosses about it. And that, Peter, to me is what, if anything comes out of this, from peewee football all the way up, if something is happening, you've got to be able to talk to your coach about it. Yeah. And I thought one of the things that will come out of this is that there will be a lot of discussion about bullying, but I also think there will be significant discussion about not just keeping all of these things in-house. It's almost, it's almost a lot of the things and a lot of the stuff that he said, it reminds me of like a gang, you know, that, that you know, this stuff never goes outside the family. And, and I just... I really feel like if Jonathan Martin had simply said, look, this has gone too far. It's overboard. And they had the kind of relationship from reading those text messages where, and again, I may be naive, that Richie Incognito, I think, would have said, for the good of the team and for the good of the relationship, okay, i got to back off this guy. He's getting ready to flip out. What, what do you I, think would have happened? I, I agree with that. Or if he, I know in our locker rooms, the two locker rooms that I was involved in, if he'd have gone to Derek Brooks or Jeff Saturday yeah. and said, you know, hey, this is what's going on, but I think it's gone too far and I'm really starting to have a problem with it, one of those two guys would have said, hey, let, let's get this solved and gone to Richie and said, hey, I know what's going on and you, your buddies, but... Uh, you know, let's let's analyze this a little bit. And it never would have gotten to the coaches. I think it would have gotten solved by some of that player leadership. Will he play for an NFL team in 2014? I think he will, Peter. I talked to three or four general managers. They all say he's good enough to play. 
Uh, Ability-wise, they'd like to have him on their team. A couple guys said, I don't know if I want the scrutiny, everything that's going to go with it. Right. But they all said, you know, I would have to sit down with him face-to-face, -face, find out exactly what happened, find out how his life has changed. If he's ready to deal with the locker room again, I think he's going to convince someone that he's ready to play. Tony, here we are a few days after the Super Bowl. You're very close to Peyton Manning. Uh, obviously had a lot of success with him. Peyton Manning woke up this morning, and what was he thinking? What was he feeling? He was thinking about next year and feeling like we didn't come through with the Super Bowl championship that we set out to. What are four or five things we can do to make ourselves better next year? I've been here with Peyton before, and I promise you within a week, he's going to go into John Fox's office with a yellow legal pad that has about <laughs> eight things. Here's what I can do better four or five things that I want to do better next year, and about two or three things. If we do this a little differently, could we tweak this? I think it'll improve us. And uh, he's going to be ready to go next year without question. Tony, really appreciate you being with us. Uncommon Marriage is the book, and this has been One-on-One -on -one with Peter King, presented by The New Windows. Thanks a lot.